guys, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0 live from the Ham Shack. Today we are going to debut uh, the Waxon KG UV9D, brand new HT radio that was just released. These are my very first radios uh, that I just received in the mail when I got home today. Uh, brand new from Waxon, and uh, I hope you like the video. Alright, this is the first look at the new Waxon Wuxian Ochang. Ochang is the correct way to say it in Chinese. The Chinese translation is Ochang, like O dash C H E N G, Ochang. But I call it Waxon because that's what everybody else, because that's how it's spelled. Some people call it Wuxian, whatever. This is the new UV9D. And it is similar to the UV-8D, as you can see. Um, the screen never actually goes dim completely. Both screens are about the same. Uh, it's got a little bit different uh, keypad. You'll see when the screen dims here. It, and it did, this is the 8D on the left and the 9D on the right. And you'll see when the screen dims on the 9D, you can still read it. So that's a, that's a change I noticed out of the box. Uh, the antennas are about the same height. It's kind of dark in here. Let me move over to the light here a little bit. All right, so this is uh, a little bit better of light here. Um, the uh, Like I said, the UV-8D, you turn the knob, hit one of the buttons, and it comes back on. And uh, after sitting for a few minutes, it goes completely dark. You can't see the screen at all. This one is the UV-9D. It'll dim the screen, but it's still uh, you can still see it. So the question will be, this is brand new in the box. I got these in the mail today. I got home about an hour ago, unboxed it, um, gave it a look-see. This right here is the, the 9D. The box actually says 9D on it. Uh, if you can see that. There's that. The box says 9D. Um, unlike some Chinese radios, they use the same box over and over again. So, the 9D manual. The charger looks the same as the 8D. Probably is the same charger, honestly. Um, belt clip is the same. The form factor is a bit different. This is a cool form factor. The thing I like about this is it's got these three buttons here. It's got two, it, the push to talk is here. It's got one button above the push to talk and two buttons below. That one right there is a mon is set up default as a monitor button. I've not plugged this thing into the computer or anything yet. This one right here turns on your FM stereo and this one here keys the other band that's not. So your push to talk will key the band that your main selection is set to. Change that back and forth. A little bit closer here, maybe. So, your push to talk, this button right here, keys your main band. The button above the push to talk, this one right here, will key the other band. So if I push the button above the push to talk, it keys the bottom band. It's a local repeater here in Colleyville. So this is the 350. This radio does um, these following frequencies right here. It does FM radio, 76 to 108 megahertz. It'll do the uh, aircraft uh, AM band, 108 to 136 megahertz in AM receive only. And of course it does 2 meter 440, 2 meter it does 136 to 174, and 440 it does 400 to 512. I haven't tested uh, whether it's full transmit on those yet. Uh, we'll test that here in a second on, on the camera. The next band it does is 230 to 250 megahertz, which is, by definition, useless. I tested this. Two, three, zero, 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 zero. So there's 230. If I turn it down, it goes to 250.9950. Move it a little bit closer here. 250.9950 to 230.0. It will not go to the uh, 1.25 meter amateur radio band. Two, two, four, seven, eight. 
So basically that band is useless. There may be some commercial stuff up there. I don't know. I've not looked it up. But for amateur radio, completely useless. Um, the next band it goes to is um, 350 to 400 megahertz, which um, from reading reading online, a lot of the Chinese vendors do that. They'll put that uh, they'll put that band in their radios as a receive band. The TYT TH9800 has it. Uh, the Ochang walks on um, uh, their their quad band radio also has it. It's the UV950P. Uh, from what I've read online, that band is not legal for anyone to talk on anywhere in the world, so it's a little bit unknown as to why the Chinese think that it, anybody wants to listen to that band. I've never heard anything on it. I've listened to it a lot, or uh, not a lot, so I don't know. But it does do 700 to 985 megahertz uh, receive, which means if you're, uh, if you're public service, fire department, police department, public works, city officials, etc., etc., are on uh, are not on digital yet, then um, you'll be able to hear them. You'll be able to scan through and hear them. Uh, then it'll cover the uh, 902 to 928 megahertz amateur radio band. Uh, we can change this. One of the local repeaters. Nine, two, seven, eight, eight, eight. That's wrong. Nine, two, seven, zero, six, two. Zero, six, two, five is, is the Dallas uh, 900 megahertz repeater. What I did find is that it will not nine two seven zero six it will not go to nine hundred megahertz to to that band on the lower side of the radio it'll only do it on the upper side i found that out just kind of by trial and error more than anything but so you can scan if you have any nine hundred megahertz repeaters for amateur radio in your area you can scan through those uh... and uh, of course receive only I still maintain, and I'll do another video about this later, I still maintain that anyone who comes out with a front face programmable 900 megahertz uh, mobile radio mostly. Uh, Elenco did the uh, DJ G2019, which was 220 and 900, and it was front face programmable. Uh, they discontinued it because they didn't, didn't get enough sales. And it's not surprising that they did that because... 220 and 900, those repeaters are few and far between. You're not going to get into them with an HT most of the time. So I think if they would have done a mobile unit, they would have sold a lot more radios. That's that's another topic. I'll talk about more about that in another video. But you go into the menu. It's very, very fluid. is the first thing I noticed about it. It's got 55, 55 presets in here. The UV-8D has 50. So it's got five more presets in it. I haven't gone through and con and, and um, compared them one by one, but uh, it's got... Uh, and I haven't plugged this thing into a computer yet. I'm sure that Chirp will not read it at, at the point in time of this video. Uh, O-Chang walks on. They make their own software, which I'll, I, I may demonstrate later. Um, so it goes through here. You can... Uh, let me go to a new repeater. That one, that one I've already saved. Uh, I go to a new repeater. I'll go to... Uh, four, one, one. What is that frequency? I can't remember. Hold on. Two, seven, two, five. I don't remember if that's it or not. Well, let me go to another one. I know. I know where this one is. Four, four, three, eight, seven, five. Okay, so you key in the frequency. Same thing on this radio as on the UV8D. You need four settings: um, frequency, PL tone, offset and um, direction. Function. So, go in here to menu, transmit CTCSS. CTCSS. I've already got it set to 110.9. Enter. Uh, scroll over here and I just kind of going through until I find it. Offset. Frequency I've already connect. got it. I've got it, I've already got it set for 5 megahertz because uh, we're on the 440 band. Enter. And then, uh, I don't remember where that, oh, I think it was up front. Yeah, SFT-D. Frequency, direction. You can do plus, minus, or off here. Off for simplex, of course. Enter. Those two. Uh, Function, Actually, I, frequency, oh, that's the wrong direction. one. That's why. Enter. There it is. So I just keyed the repeater. So that's all you need. And of course you can save that in the memory by going here. 
channel name, memory channel 30. Channel memory. Let's say I want to save it on channel 5. Enter. And then I haven't really looked up how to switch back and forth between menu and, uh... Function select. I don't know how to go into memory mode yet. I haven't looked that up. Like I said, I just got this thing. One thing I did notice on the menu here, or on the screen here, there's a menu and an exit, just like on the old rate on the UV-8D, but there's no buttons for them. So that must be like a holdover, because your exit button is here, and your menu button is here. And it's got these two buttons down here, but it looks like the screen does something too, and it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't do anything. So, KC5 HWB testing. So that's that. Um, the, the antennas, if you can see that, the antennas on these two radios, the UV-8D and 9D, are about the same. They're both SMA male. That's what it looks like there. You can see that in the light. I gotta get some better light in here. Um, it's got. Um, it's a little bit taller. It's it's it looks like it's thicker than the UV8D, but I've got an extended battery on the UV8D, so really stock wise, it's it's about the same as the UV8D. Um, but that's about it. It's got 999 memory channels in it. Of course, you can program those for uh, receive-only channels if you want, or you can program them for transmit channels. Uh, you can turn this annoying beep off if you want to. Function. You can turn the voice off, too. Um, Enter. So now the beep is gone. Turn the Function. beep off. Uh, oh, one thing. Here's, here's something I did notice. Uh, let's see. Step. Step. Frequency. Only goes to five does not go down to 2.5 kilohertz. This is the very first revision, very first um, very first release of this radio. Uh, let's see if I remember how to, I think you do the three. Frequency. No, that's not how you do it on this one. I think you hold down three, you turn it off and hold down three on the, on the UV-8D and it'll show you what firmware version it is. Frequency. It's not working on here. Let me see if that works on on this one. Yeah. Yeah, you turn the power off, hold down the number 3, and it'll tell you the firmware version. You'll notice this is 1.01. I've carried this radio since it was first released. Never had any issues with it. A lot of people complain about uh, front end overload, uh, squelch breaking all the time. I've never had that issue with this radio. I carry it with me all the time. Never any issues with it. But anyway, the, the 3, holding down the 3 does not... Put it into firmware mode on this radio so it's obviously different so i'll have to look that up and see how to do that anyway it's the first revision it does not go to to um does not go to 2.5 kilohertz uh it's still got crossband repeat still got um uh 999 memory channels that was the thing i liked the most about the uv8d quite honestly and this one's got um six band or seven band receive if you include fm stereo um, but, uh, the 220 or the 1.25 meter, I should say, megahertz band is worthless because it's 230 to 250 megahertz. So it will not receive 1.25 meter amateur radio bands. So anyway, that is that. So any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up. I'll, uh, cut over to a new slide here in a minute. Okay. So that was the Waxon O-Chang. Uh, UV 90, the KG, the, the full the full model number is the KG-UV 90, uh, which is this radio right here. Um, I said during the video I would test um, outside band transmit, and I did. It's uh, It'll transmit full 136 to 174 and 400 to 512. Um, same as the UV-8D. Well, the UV-8D would only go 400 to 480, but with a modification, a firmware update from Waxon, it would go to 512 or maybe 520, somewhere up in there. Um, this one goes straight through out of the box with no, um, no mods. Um, it is not Part 90 or Part 95 approved. You can see right here, 
There's no Part 90 sticker, Part 95 certification on here. My UV8D has a Part 90 sticker on the back. It's one of the first models. Um, I'm told that they they um, kind of pulled that after that walk after that UV8D was first released. But my UV8D actually has a Part 90 sticker. I don't really care one way or the other because I don't use it for anything except amateur radio anyway. But this radio will transmit full transmit from 136 to 174 and from 400 to 512. Some people call me and they say, hey, I got my UV8D and it's locked to amateur radio bands. How do I unlock it? I don't know where you're getting your radios from, but every radio I've ever sold is full transmit. They come that way from China. So if you're buying your radios from a U.S. supplier who's locking them, maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. I'm speculating. My radios that I sell, I sell them as is, out of the box, from the vendor in China. Same way you buy them on Amazon. Anybody can buy one on Amazon. You don't even have to have a call sign. Anybody can buy one. Um, That's the 3 3 repeater out of Halton City. It's a good repeater. Um, anyway, the. Um, you know, I'm not saying. I, I'm, I'm telling you, don't transmit outside the amateur radio bands. It's, just, it's not legal. What you do with your radio is your business. I'm not going to tell you what to do one way or the other. I don't use mine for anything except amateur radio, except for scanning some stuff here and there. Um, so, what you do with yours is your call. Anyway, this has been the UV9D presentation. Again, I just got this radio in the mail uh, today, pulled it out of the box, and decided to shoot this video immediately. Uh, this will be episode three, I think it is. So, uh, uh, any questions, drop me a line. Um, I have these for sale on my website, grapevineamateurradio.com. I um, only have a couple of them right now, but I'll be getting some more. I've got, I've got several cases of them on order from Waxon. So as soon as they release them in mass production, I'll, I'll have a bunch of them. Um, you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Or, uh, give me a call or email me. GrapevineAmateurRadio.com uh, has my phone number and my, uh, my email address on it. You can text me at that phone number too. 73s, guys.